ratio. Texas Tech, on the other hand, 289th out of 347 in level of experience. But they do have youthful exuberance. They lead the Big 12 in steals. So we'll see what happens here today. And here is that experienced lineup of the Jayhawks. You see the seniors in Elijah Johnson, Travis Relliford, Kevin Young, and Jeff Withy. Three of those four seniors are fifth-year seniors. And, of course, the outstanding freshman in Ben McLemore. Now for Texas Tech, Dusty Hannes is a good-looking freshman as far as his shot-making ability. He is shooting 44% from three-point range. Josh Gray, another freshman. He is doing a great job at the point. And then, of course... You have the rest of the Red Raiders. The head coach, the interim head coach of the Red Raiders is Chris Walker. And my goodness, what a job he has done with this program at 8-5 and five on the year. And no one in the country, in my opinion, does a better job than the guy that he will be facing today, Bill Self. In his 10th year with the Jayhawks, 282 wins already just with Kansas. 489 in his career. It's the Jayhawks who have the ball first in their road blue uniforms and Texas Tech in their home gray. Jayhawks look inside. Nothing there. Swing it around. Johnson. Relliford. Back to Johnson. They're really clogging up the middle. Young's got it. That's a shot the Red Raiders are willing to give up. And if Young can do that, look out. That's a good sign for the Jayhawks. You want to make Kevin Young shoot the ball. Now, the key for Tech is they got to take their time on the offensive end. Use their offense as a weapon for their defense. What do you mean by that? You want to try and shorten the game. When you have less talent, you don't want to play a 40-minute game. You want to play about a 24-minute game. So try and take 25, 30 seconds off of each possession. They've done it already in this one. The shot clock is down to five. Shot from the wing is blocked by McLemore, and that'll be a shot clock violation. And you know what? It's weird to say, but really not a bad possession for the Red Raiders. Well, in that situation, if you're going to turn the ball over, it better be a dead ball turnover so that Kansas doesn't have an opportunity to get out and run the fast break. Johnson gives it up for McLemore. Jayhawks are going to look today, Coach, to get McLemore some more touches offensively. Well, you're going to see Tech try and pack it in and force a lot of jump shots. The one guy they will mark closely and try and prevent from catching the ball is McLemore. And there's a push-off by Young going for the rebound. He shoved Jordan Tolbert in the back. First foul on Young, first one of the game. This is Josh Gray bringing the ball up. Minimal pressure from Elijah Johnson. Not even looking at the basket yet. Shot clock at 13. And picked off by Young. And then he is fouled by Tolbert. Foul number 32, Jordan Tolbert. Here's a situation where you must have space on the offensive end. Young knows Tolbert's not a threat from the perimeter. He backs off. No space to make that post pass and a steal. Young, what an amazing story for KU. Think about it. He, he averaged 10 points a game at Loyola Marymount. In all due respect, a lesser program, yet he comes here and he is a vital cog for the Jayhawks. Young with the ball now. Back out to Relliford. McLemore, three-pointer. That one's off no good. He was perfect from three-point range the other night against Iowa State, six for six. Including a huge one at the end of regulation and then one to start overtime when the Jayhawks got by Iowa State, 97-89. Tolbert. We look at Withy just standing there hoping he takes a shot. And then a travel. So three possessions for the Red Raiders. They don't have a field goal attempt yet. Credit that one to Jeff Withy. It's the fear of the shot blocker in the paint that caused the turnover. Well, Chris Walker has infused a lot of energy and enthusiasm into this program, and he's hoping they take the interim tag off. He's very hopeful that they'll make him the head coach. 
permanently, but nothing has been decided yet. Here's a pickoff. Williams has got it and then swatted out by McLemore. Dave, that's one of the things Texas Tech does well. They lead the Big 12 in steals. Nine and a half a game. Great on-ball defense, but a good hustle play by McLemore to prevent the layup. Two-pointer, that's Kravich. Dayon Kravitz from London, Ontario, by way of York University in Canada. Kravitz sat out last year. Pace of this game, certainly exactly where the Red Raiders want it so far, Coach. Well, the key is if they can make some open jump shots. If Kravitz can step up to that high post area, then Kansas is going to have to make a decision. Do they keep Jeff Withy by the basket, or do you bring him out to challenge the shot? Johnson, three-pointer, got it. Elijah Johnson starting to pick up the pace offensively. In fact, he's been in double figures in three of the last four games. Kravich again, this time he turns down the shot, trying to pull Withy away from that basket. You've got to be careful. Even though you made your last one, you don't want to start shooting quick. And then a whistle and a pushing foul on Withy. Withy does not foul very often. Dave, he doesn't foul because he has great feet. He moves his feet as well as any post player in the country and better than most guards. Now those, I don't know what size they are, those maybe are big 16, dogs 17, that he's but he around. moves them well, doesn't he? A lot of people credit that volleyball experience growing up on the beaches of California, and certainly that's a part of it. But he's just extremely athletic and in his shot blocking ability. A lot of times it comes off the weak side. He blocks shots of the guys he's guarding. He doesn't over block though. And that's one of the things Coach he's, Self likes about it. He's got a very high shot blocking IQ. He's not one of those guys who just wants to slot it into row Z. He understands it's about keeping it in play and gaining a possession. Johnson working off a pick. And then that one almost picked off. Jayhawks recover. There's Relaford. Relaford at his best in a broken play. Getting to the rim. Relaford also bird dogging. Dusty Hanna's not letting him have any free room at all. Crockett off that bench. Best sixth man in the country and a good tip home by Kravitz. from Withy. Relaford can't handle it. And Coach Self not real happy about the first four and a half minutes of this contest. Thrilled with that shot by Relaford, however. And we're back after this from our friends at Phillips 66. <laughs> Partner of Big 12 fans everywhere. You know, the fear in Lubbock was they'd have nothing to cheer about, but that hasn't been the case so far. Texas Tech within one because of that man. Dayon Kravich. He has all six of their points so far. The tempo is what Tech wants right now. The game cannot be in the 70s for them to win. It must be in the 50s, and they have done an excellent job thus far of taking time off the shot clock before a shot attempt. Kravitz looking inside, nothing there. Again, they're pulling Withy way away from the basket. Bounce pass is stolen by Perry Ellis. Boy, a good jump on the pass by Ellis. Now Tharp to Withy, and he's fouled by Hannes. You want your post player to run the floor. Great play by Perry Ellis to start it. But here's what I'm talking about. A great point guard knows when his postmen run the floor and they reward him. Tharp doing an excellent job. You're talking about the great feet of Jeff Withy. How about that seven-footer, first one down the court? Holy cow. He's won a few sprints in his day. There's no question about that. Well, you see what he is doing as far as shot blocking ability. In fact, 
That 5.1 blocks per game average would lead many teams. <laughs> He's also a good free throw shooter. Started off slowly, but he's near 70% from the line. The Jayhawks with a three-point advantage. With Rich Zavosik, I'm Dave Armstrong. Glad to, have, glad to have you courtside with us here in Lubbock, Texas. Great use of the left hand. And then a turnover by the Jayhawks. That's a couple of sloppy turnovers for KU. David, it's a fine line between running shot clock and getting too cautious or hesitant. Great attack of the rim by Tolbert after they moved the ball side to side and shifted the defense. Colbert playing with a heavy heart. He lost his father only 40 years of age about a month ago, and it's been very difficult for him emotionally over the last month. They're hoping that at some point, the grief stricken Jordan Colbert will return to form that he had a year ago. an excellent job of shifting the defense opening up driving lanes Williams with a nice shot Jamal Williams junior transfer from Lakeland College out of Brooklyn New York first lead of the game for the Red Raiders with and he's fouled on the play You can see as they shift it side to side. Now a little cross. It catches Relaford off, or excuse me, Tharp off balance. Knocks it down. With it going back to the line again. The foul there was on Tolbert, too, and that's bad news for the Red Raiders because he's picked up his second. So Tolbert forced to go over to the bench for Texas Tech. Interesting philosophy. Some coaches, you get two in the first half, you take it out, take them out. Some coaches will gamble a little. What did you do? You know, it, it depended on how good a player he was. If we really needed him in a game like this, I might let him go a little bit and trust him and have a little confidence not to pick up that third. But there is a, a big danger, and you're only down one right now. You have to know the player, too. I mean, some guys Absolutely. are just prone to foul. Other guys can play without fouling. Absolutely. And, and Tolbert's game is go hard to the offensive glass where you tend to pick up some fouls. For whatever reason, Kravich was not expecting that pass. Now Tharp off the glass. No. Out of bounds. Last touch by Ellis. Sloppy game so far. A lot of turnovers. In fact, four for Texas Tech, three for Bill Self's Jayhawks, and a couple of those totally unforced. And Jeff Withy will get his first breather. Over there talking with Norm Roberts, former head coach at St. John's, back with Bill Self for the second time. That's an illegal screen set by Kravich and a foul on Dayon Kravich. And that's his first. Excuse me, that's his second. So now you got the big guys for the Red Raiders in foul trouble, two on Kravich. Now a good scouting report, paying attention to detail. Tharp read it, and he jumps through the closing door before the door is closed on. That is attention to detail by Nadir Tharp. And now with Kravich on the sideline, their leading scorer with six points, and also their tallest player, you would expect Kansas to try to attack the glass. And a travel on the part of Elijah Johnson thought he was bumped by Kadir Topsoba. Right on cue, Dave. You said attack the glass, and that's yep. where he was going. Five team fouls on the Red Raiders already this half. goes inside and there's a holding call first this one called against Perry Ellis that'll be the third team foul on KU
Harry Ellis, he's really the X factor for this Jayhawk team. They've been great even without getting great play from Ellis so far, but if he can all of a sudden live up to the potential that he has as being a McDonald's All-American and a four-time player of the year in the state of Kansas, look out. I mean, Kansas could be almost untouchable. He is the X factor, as you say, because he's capable of stepping out and making that 15-foot jumper. Tech again patient. This is Ty Nurse with the ball with eight to shoot it. And a long three-pointer. That foul is called on Elijah Johnson trying to box out on the rebound. A one-point Jayhawk lead. Some of our potential finalists for our Capital One Cup Impact Performance of the Week. And Jeff Withy had yet another double-double. He gets it done in so many different ways that he impacts the game. Offensively, defensively, he can steal the ball besides blocking shots. Well, Withy, the total package for the Jayhawks and very tough inside for KU. He had 15 points and 12 rebounds against the Cyclones. Hey, log on to CapitalOneCup.com to vote for this week's impact performance. So you look at Jeff Withy and what he did against the Cyclones, who, by the way, just walloped Texas 82 to 62 to move the Cyclones to one and one on the year. And I think Fred Hoiberg's team has gotten the attention of everyone in the Big 12 with their performance Wednesday night, coupled with a 20-point win today against the Longhorns. They lost the number of seniors last year. Withy, don't bring that in here. Here's Tharp. And McLemore picks up the loose chain. So all the stars are shining. Withy with a block, McLemore with a jam. First time tonight that Kansas turned defense into offense. Yeah, it looks like they've picked up the intensity offensively. Relaford ahead of the pack. Timeout for Chris Walker. He can feel the run coming, and he has to call timeout. You have to. 30 second timeout. You have to try and work the momentum somehow. And you can see Jeff Withy coming over from the weak side. Great timing. Ignites the fast break. And how about a hustle play by McLemore? Not assuming that the shot's going to be made. He runs the floor, gets the offensive rebound. Jeff Withy impacts the game like Anthony Davis did a year ago for Kentucky when they won it all. Jeff Withy changes teams' offensive schemes because of his ability to block shots and change shots, which are equally as important. He just changes the way you go about it. I mean, because Kansas can really funnel everything into the paint, and then there he is. Well, he gives confidence to the perimeter players to pressure the ball as hard as they can yeah. because they know if they get beat, uh, they get, uh, as you used to call Cole Aldridge, the long arm of the law yeah, in Jeff right. Withy in the paint now for Kansas. Best shot blocker you've seen? Withy? Without question. Yeah, without question. And Young has another steal. Jayhawks looking to go again. Tharp, numbers weren't there, pulls it out. Relaford will go to the line after he's bumped by Nurse. Third straight turnover or defensive stop for Kansas after the timeout. And Kevin Young moving his feet to get on top of the post. Different energy from KU's in the last couple of minutes. They're on a 6-0 run right now. Makes you wonder what was said in that huddle during a timeout by Coach Self because they have energized it and created offense with their defense. Get the sense it was a one-way conversation. <laughs> there was no discussion. <laughs> Relaford, good free throw shooter, 86% on the year. Well, he's just been on a tear, hasn't he? Last five games, Relaford. 79% from the field, 69% from three-point land, and those five steals for the Jayhawks are really adding up. Red Raiders, not good with the ball. They've turned it over. They have more turnovers than assists this year. But right now, they're in the danger zone. 
You can't get away from your game plan of trying to run shot clock, even though you're down seven points. You got to stick with it, try and get a good shot. Robinson, is that a good shot? It is because it went, it and is. there was four on the shot clock. It's perfect timing. You, you've got one of your better shooters taking the ball, taking a shot, although it was challenged, but it was done at the right point in the possession. Well, nothing would indicate that he's one of your better shooters, except for that form, because statistically, four of 27 going into that shot from three-point range. You know how I judge it? I watched Coach Walker on, on the side. There was no angst in his face when right. he took the shot, right. so he obviously has some confidence in him. As, as he told us earlier, you know, he likes when Ty Nurse shoots the ball, but Ty Nurse has not shot it very well. But that's part of the problem. That's it right. hasn't been on the defensive end. It's been they haven't been able to score on the offensive end. What a throw for Dalen Robinson as he's able to hit this three. Kid grew up in Kansas City, Missouri, went to Moberly Area Community College. And then they're looking to see, is this a two or a three? Is that foot on the line? Originally called a three out on the court. And now it looks like Higgins is pointing that the toe was on the line. So this could very well be a two, not a three. When you looked at that replay, Higgins definitely was pointing at the foot, and he did not indicate that was a three-point play. Uh, it looks like it, his foot is on the line, at least from this angle. Yeah. As you mentioned, Dalen Robinson, a Kansas City product. Northeast High School was a Dorena Award winner as the best player in Kansas City his senior year. And John Higgins got it right both times, both live and then on replay. So that's a he's two like point he's shot. Like, he's like Memorex. <laughs> Five point Jayhawk lead nearing the halfway mark of the first half. Poked away. Nurse got a hand on that one, knocked it out. Kind of a lazy pass from Elijah Johnson. Yeah, poor job of rubbing your defensive man off this stream, but a, a good job by Ty Nurse locking and trailing. Macklemore only taken two shots so far. With the, look at the double coverage on him. That's why the pass didn't go in there. Now McLemore crossover dribble and a pushing foul. This will send McLemore to the line because Kansas is in the bonus. Foul is on Todrick Gotcher. That's his first. McLemore, 89% free throw shooter. Kid averaging almost 17 points a game now. Coming off that career high, 33 against the Cyclones. And he'll get the bonus here. In that game, he went 6 of 6 from three-point land, 10 of 12 overall. And that kind of left Coach Self scratching his head a little bit, saying, hmm, if a guy gets 33 points on only 12 shots, maybe we need to get him some more shots. <laughs> Well, now it becomes even tougher because he becomes the marked man. And, oh, yeah. and now you don't help off him. So it, it's going to be up to his teammates to, to get him open and help him with a couple of screens. Crockett hasn't done much in this game. Pulls up. That's off no good. And they're going to get Withy for pushing off inside on Tolbert. And that'll be the second on Withy, or is that the first? Nope, they earlier took a foul away from him and gave it to someone else. First foul on Withy here. Good hustle play, created space by Tolbert. Little rebounding niche. Coach Walker's got some confidence, got him back in the game with two fouls. Five team fouls on KU this half. That was the first on Withy. Tolbert's back in there, and he's in there too long as far as the pain is concerned. Three-second call against Jordan Tolbert. This is that point of the game where Chris Walker is kind of rolling the dice a little bit, putting Tolbert back in, playing with two fouls, but he doesn't want to see this game get out of hand. Well, he certainly doesn't. Now he knows on a defensive end. 
he's, he's more of a risk to pick up that third foul, so he wisely substitutes for him, trying to get him to that eight-minute timeout. Macklemore, good pass inside Young. Jayhawks swing it around, top of the key. Johnson, no. Young trying to keep it alive, but he tips it to Nurse. Crockett, off balance shot, no good. Somehow, what a tip home. Wow, what a play by Gocher. So a little run here by Texas Tech back within five and a travel by Johnson. That'll be the fifth turnover on KU. This is a great hustle play by Gotcher. Coming from underneath and as we talked about with the long arm of the law, how about Texas Tech and Gotcher with the long arm on the offensive rebound? One of the things that Texas Tech has done well thus far is they have gone to the offensive glass and created some shot opportunities and some baskets, just as Iowa State did on Wednesday. Tough shot there for Tolbert. Now a tie up, and the possession arrow will give the ball back to the Red Raiders. Now Gocher has really come in off that bench and given him a lift. He's not a guy that plays very much but he is coming off his best game against TCU and he scored 14 points illegal pick that's the second one of the game for the Red Raiders this one is called on Crockett and that's his first foul a little extra hip action good call by the official but a lot of time Dave that's not the screener's fault. That's the cutter's fault. He's got to come tighter off that screen mm. so that Crockett doesn't make that extra move. Yeah, Crockett just stuck that right foot out there and created the contact. And there are Ten turnovers already for the Red Raiders. McLemore comes flying in, and he's fouled. That'll be the third on Tolbert. Oh, no, they called Gocher instead. That's actually a break for the Red Raiders, but it is two on Gocher. Uh, good call by the official. Gocher with the late grab after he got beat. McLemore cooks his home in the free throw. Again, McLemore, the uh, game they're referring to by that graphic in 85, Danny Manning had 35 points. That's the freshman record. And if you're wondering, well, Wilt Chamberlain certainly had more than that as a freshman. No, he didn't, because he didn't play as a they freshman. He weren't allowed to play back then. <laughs> it's a good possibility he might have had more than 35. Very good possibility. Great pointer. Jamal Williams. Texas Tech is playing with a lot of confidence now. And the longer that they keep it close, the more confidence they're going to gain. McLemore, three-pointer, no. Crockett did a good job fending off. Ellis going for that rebound. Great decision by Robinson. You don't want to get into a running game with Kansas. Stick to the game plan. Excellent decision pulling it back out. Ellis got a hand on that one. Texas Tech lucky to get it back. Shot clock doesn't reset. It's at 10. Nurse really gave it up, expecting Tolbert to be somewhere else. Bad pass by Nurse. Jamari Trailer is in now for the Jayhawks. That's Ellis. Takes it strong in there. And he creates the contact. Jay Crockett picks up the foul, and that's his second. So the Jayhawks having a little trouble pulling away from the Red Raiders. And we're back after this from our friends at Phillips 66. 
Studio 66, it's Bedlam, the Sooners and Cowboys. Check out Buddy Heald, one of the talented freshman guards for the Sooners, knocking down the three. Right now, Sooners lead it by five with 11.47 to go. Dave and Rich. All right, thanks a lot, Doug. Look forward to your halftime report with Rich Zavosik. I'm Dave Armstrong, courtside here at the United Spirit Arena in Lubbock, Texas. Where the Jayhawks start off 1-0 with that overtime win. Baylor and Kansas State getting a jump on the conference. Both 2-0 to start the year. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, as we mentioned, just getting going. And uh, you look at all those teams. It's going to be tough now for, look at Texas, losing today to drop to 0-3 in conference play. It's a tough one for Texas they lose to West Virginia after making a three at the buzzer and then they lose in overtime but a, a huge win for Kansas State on the road at West Virginia yeah, that's two losses for West Virginia at home now one to Oklahoma and one today to Kansas State Perry Ellis at the line talking to coach self last night and he was saying that this kid's starting to come on. He's really getting the signs that he's starting to gain more confidence. And he couldn't stress more the importance of having Perry Ellis as a real threat inside at that four position. Well, the upside of this team relies on his development. When you have seniors who are playing to their potential, now you have another freshman who can be an impact like Macklemore. Ellis certainly can be. Gray. Fires it in there. Oh, nice little ball fake, wasn't it? By Tapsaba. It's different in that lane when Withy is on the bench. Ellis, quick step. Blocked from behind. Trailer keeps it alive. Tharp turns down a three. McLemore is fouled. Williams Jr. doesn't like the call, but he's whistled for the foul. And that will send McLemore back to the line again. So off the dribble. That's an easy call for yeah. the official. Yeah. You put both hands on the offensive guy, it's an automatic. At the line, First foul on Jamal Williams. So here's McLemore where he's doing most of his damage at the line so far today. Kansas in the double bonus. And for the good readers, number 11, Dayon Kravich, for number 12. Checking back in, playing with two fouls now, Kravich. He's been out for a while. That's Soba from Africa will be back on the bench again. McLemore's hit all of his free throws, and the Jayhawks extend their lead to five. Dave, we're 14 minutes in, and it is going to the script as it was written by Chris Walker. The pace is slow, with the exception of where you had a three straight possessions where Kansas was able to get things in transition. It's become a half-court game. Pass thrown away. Trailer's got it. Johnson looking to run if they can. Texas Tech doing a good job in transition defense, though. Trailer, no. Gets it back. That won't go. And there's Kravich with the rebound. Coach Self calls those shots bunnies, and the Jayhawks have missed a few. Oh, the, that bunny hopped right out. Ooh, almost a steal there by Johnson. Switch out top. Kravich doing some real hard work on the glass. Here comes Tharp. Two on two. Tharp. Kravich. Boy, he is a workman on the glass. Texas Tech has been the aggressor on the offensive glass and has done an excellent job. Eight offensive rebounds tonight. If you remember back to Wednesday, Iowa State had 13 offensive rebounds. Tech doing the same thing in the first half. Can you believe that rebounding edge? Look at that, Coach. 13 to 5, Texas Tech. They are just quicker than basketball right now. Jayhawks normally have a plus six rebound edge. Shot clock violation. 
And then as Coach Walker looks out, that's okay. That's all right. I mean, you've got to be aware when it's under five, put the shot up instead of passing inside. Always the encourager, Chris Walker. Uh, I, it, I think in a, in a previous life, he was a... Uh, ordained minister the way he <laughs> preaches he's always he's always preaching and teaching these guys and they're following his instructions thus far with a, I think the word that comes to mind is engaging when you discuss Chris Walker he is certainly all of that and right now he has his Red Raiders believing a five-point lead for KU up in the studio 66 halftime report k-state wins on the road in morgantown all the highlights from bedlam and how about number one duke going down for the first time this year all the highlights of scores back out to dave and coach z guys thanks a lot doug look forward to your report at halftime with brendan manzer and uh boy kansas state they escape as you mentioned with that one point victory in morgantown and uh iowa state looked mighty good today against the Texas Longhorns and the Bedlam is going on in Norman right now, Coach. Big, big game. Well, you look at Marcus Smart, Oklahoma Shreve State, one of the premier impact freshmen. There's Jeff Withy. He's got one block. All his points at the line so far in this game. And also for you look at Ben McLemore, he has eight points, six of those from the line. That's where the Jayhawks are really building this lead. Withy does not have a single rebound in this game. Which is hard to believe right now. That he doesn't have a defensive rebound, but part of it has be, become or been because he ha has come over and either blocked a shot or changed a shot. So he doesn't get an opportunity to rebound the ball. But they've done an excellent job of keeping him off the offensive glass. Well, they've done a good job of rebounding the Red Raiders, but they've turned it over 13 times. However, the Jayhawks only nine points off those 13 turnovers. Dead ball turnovers don't hurt you as bad. Good job by Gray to split the defense. Now Williams and McLemore got a piece of him. We'll send Williams to the line. And McLemore, he'll pick up the foul. That's his second. It's the sixth team foul on KU, and going to the line will be Williams. He's 8 of 10 from the line this year. As the name might suggest, Phillips 66, the proud sponsor of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship. Both start with Phillips 66, both stand for performance. Phillips 66, experts in gas since 1927. Williams misses the first chance at the second. Not many opportunities from the line for the Red Raiders in this game, and that's where the Jayhawks really have built their lead. Six-point advantage, under three and a half to go first half. What do you think Texas Tech has done? They've sagged in so much. Kansas hasn't been able to get the ball inside. They need to get the ball swinging from side to side to shift the defense to create an opening inside. What they're trying to do, Johnson, that three-pointer is well off target. Good rebound by Kadir Tapsoba. Again, one and done a lot for the Jayhawks in this game. Bounce pass, Tapsoba caught it off his hip. Shot clock down to seven. Gray, Withy comes out on him. Gray takes it inside on Withy. Coach Self not happy, allowing Gray to go all the way from the top of the key to the rim. Jeff Withy does a good job of hedging the screen and moving his feet, but there's no help side defense. We get a wingman who does an Olay move as Withy gets beat, and Kevin Young doesn't come over. You see him back off. He's got to understand, the only player on the court who can hurt you is the guy with the ball. Make them throw another pass. 
quick timeout by Coach Salt. Not happy. Look at him looking at Kevin Young. How can you allow a guy to go all the way from the top of the key, dribble around our big guy Withy, and not be there defensively? Well, think about it, how often Jeff Withy comes off his man and makes the block. Kevin Young has the same opportunity, and he backs away, and they get an easy basket. Good play by Josh Gray. Is this a fair examination of the first half of KU that outside of about a three-minute period when they played with a lot of energy, they have not been able to do that for whatever reason against the Red Raiders here so far. It, it is the offense that has taken the win out of Kansas's sails because you're making a team play defense for 30 seconds on every single possession, and it wears at you offensively. Crockett. The question for Chris Walker with this strategy was not could they stall Kansas, but could they score at the end of the shot clock? They've done it just enough to be effective thus far. Gray pulls up. Hannes can't get loose. Fall away jumper that's an air ball. That's the only look Hannes has had at the basket today. He's been smothered by Relaford. A little floater that won't go for Elijah Johnson. And again, one and done for KU. Dave, I got to credit Texas Tech's offense for that shot. You get Kansas a little bit anxious on the offensive end because they've just played 35 seconds of defense on the other end. I dare say there's not been a half this year where Kansas has been out-rebounded 16-6. Six rebounds for the Jayhawks in one half. And Tech coming off a, a game where they played poorly against Baylor have reignited the passion. With his first rebound, and then he's fouled. That's one where if you're Kadir Tepsoba, you just got to let that go. Get him the rebound, but don't foul him and give him three points. You're 94 feet from the basket. You have no chance at getting the rebound. Don't put a 70% free throw shooter on the line when his team is struggling to score. All of his points, as you see, from the line today. Point advantage for KU. Pull up jumper that's no good. Relaford's got the rebound. About a three second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. With he going to work as it's stripped. Here comes Crockett, who has not scored in the first half. And now Texas Tech will go for the final shot. Dave, Coach Walker's got to be happy. He's been able to keep it close with Jordan Tolbert on the bench in foul trouble. And a foul by Elijah Johnson with five seconds to go. When Jamal Williams was shooting a three-pointer second foul on Johnson, Williams will get three free throws. My pet peeve is a coach fouling the jump shooter. Elijah Johnson a little bit careless in the closeout. Drifts into the shooter. The official makes the call. Coach Self right now probably preparing his halftime speech. It could be a little bit heated because of sloppy plays like that. Think about it, Dave. In the last three possessions, Texas Tech has an opportunity to pick up four points off of fouling the jump shooter. Well, the Jayhawks have shot 33% in the first half, 5 of 15, 1 of 4 from three-point range. Free throw shooting has kept them in the lead in this contest. However, Williams with these three free ones, we can pull them within two of the Red Raiders, and Chris Walker's got to be so excited. All the talk that he had before the game today, telling his team, 
we can do the impossible if you listen to what we tell you if you go off and do your own thing you cannot accomplish the impossible we can do it and all of that positive energy rubbing off on the red raiders so far here today three free ones for williams and it's a two-point game they all have to go the length of the court in five seconds just important for Josh Gray here. Don't foul, but make Tharp dribble the ball up the floor. And Tharp throws it away. And the Red Raiders, number 11, Daniel Kravich, for number 12, Tadir Tensilva. Jayhawks will not defend the inbounds pass. Just let the first half come to a close and get into that locker room. So a first half in which the Red Raiders and Chris Walker walk off this court thinking, you know what? We can believe. We've got a chance. It is not impossible. The sixth-ranked Jayhawks have the lead, but it's only a two-point advantage as we get you to Doug Bell in Studio 66. Dave, thank you so much. Uh, that is a shocking score. Last seven meetings between the two teams, Kansas has won by an average of almost 30 points per game. How shocked are you right now? Well, you and I sat here, and I think a lot of, like a lot of people were watching that first half and expected Kansas at some point to put on a run. But credit the Red Raiders, a terrific job defensively. What they've done on the glass, I think, is the most surprising, a plus-eight advantage on, on a bigger, more <laughs> athletic, more talented Kansas basketball team. And they're through the first 20 minutes with a chance to win. Now can they go and back it up the second half? Because you know Bill Self's going to go in and give the Jayhawks a do-better talk and uh, they'll come out with a lot of fire in the second half, but Tech's playing great right now. Yeah, and so is uh, Kansas State. Uh, winning today in our first game on the Big 12 Network. Taking on West Virginia. Kansas State looking for their eighth consecutive victory and stay undefeated in conference play. Will Spradling had the ball poked loose. Terry Henderson to Gary Brown. West Virginia trails by three at the half, and then you kind of sense that maybe the Mountaineers would get it going. Jabari Hines to Eric Murray. West Virginia trails by one. But, Brendan, in the end here, this was big. Kansas State by one, and here comes the ball. Back for West Virginia, and inside, rejected by Shane Southwell. What a win for Kansas State. It was. Tremendous road win. Had the week off after being Oklahoma State last week. They stay undefeated in the league. Texas against Iowa State. Rick Barnes and the mayor, Fred Hoiberg. Corey Lucius finds Chris Babb. Wide open, Iowa State takes more threes than anybody else, hits more threes than anybody else. Only team in the country to score over 70 points in every game this year. Julian Lewis knocks it down. But Texas just didn't have enough firepower today. Iowa State so efficient on the offensive end. They can score in several spots. Four players in double figures. 11 threes total on the day. 18 assists on 25 makes. You see how they move the ball in a great way, Doug. Sheldon McClellan not only played one minute for Texas, had his a bad ankle, and Texas goes 0-3 for the first time ever under Rick Barnes. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, it's bedlam. Oklahoma looking to start 2-0 in the Big 12 for the first time since 8 9 Yellen Hornbeek knocks it down. Oklahoma up by 14. That was their biggest lead, and inside it goes Marcus Smart and company and smart is so impressive and, you know Oklahoma State kind of hanging around Brendan yeah they have and they, they could have folded the tents but Oklahoma came out of the gate they controlled this game for the most part still up eight as you see at this point a lot of game left but Oklahoma like I said I, I thought they came out with a lot of fire Oklahoma State uh, did not play well early in the game and it's tough coming from from down that far behind trying to get into the basketball game. But Oklahoma State, Marcus Smart's played with a little bit of foul trouble. LeBron Nash continues to struggle. And you can't have that, particularly on the road, with a team like Oklahoma who continues to get better. They're, they're better in the last month. Oklahoma State is not as good as they were a month ago. Well, we have a heck of a game brewing here in the Big 12 Network. Kansas, Marcus Relaford, they thought this would be an easy one. But Texas Tech hanging in there, down by two at the half. <laughs> makes Big 12 men's basketball stand out? Nationally ranked teams every week since the league began in 1996. More consensus All-Americans than any conference the last six seasons. Leading the nation in NBA draft picks since 2008. The best winning percentage in NCAA play the past five years. That's why we're standing together for Big 12 men's basketball. 
Capital One Cash Rewards card gives you and played exactly how Coach Walker wanted him to do. That, to me, is a sign of a, of a guy who has his team still believing not only in him, but themselves as well. They're going to catch somebody here as we go down the rest of the conference season. There's no one on the planet outside of perhaps that locker room here in Lubbock that had thought the Red Raiders even had a prayer in this contest. And they had a two-point game at the half and then Kansas just pulled away methodically in the second half but Chris Walker this is a game you can build on well as as we watch them in their their pregame shoot around and he gathers his players around in a circle and he talked about your thoughts will be proven out by your actions in the game today if you believe in what I am telling you to do your actions will show it they stayed disciplined on the offensive end yes they turned the ball over they didn't make as many shots but they still stuck to their game plan and they held their own for about 30 minutes before Kansas just overpowered them. Tharp carried it. That's a turnover. A little sloppy play in the closing seconds. Coach Self doesn't like that carry call because really it did not give the defense an advantage. Usually you only get that call when it gives one team or the other, the offensive player, the advantage. And it didn't really give Nadir Tharp an advantage on that particular play. In a situation you come down to the end of the game, you've only turned it over eight times. Mm -hmm. You're trying to keep it in single digits and not get sloppy. You have to make sure that everybody plays to the final horn. Hannah's no. Trailer's got the rebound. Shot clock is turned off. Okay, you can just hold the ball. And the Jayhawks will go to 14 and one on the year with their 13th straight victory, 2 and 0 in conference play. The Red Raiders go to 8 and 6 and 1 and 2 in the Big 12. Not as easy as a lot of folks suspected for the Jayhawks, but the second half they came out and they played really good in the first 18 minutes of the second half. Well, winning on the road is never easy in any conference, certainly not in the Big 12. So to come in here on the road against an inspired Texas Tech team after an emotional win on Wednesday, it, they shook off the, the rust in the first half and turned up the intensity in the second. Once again, our final score, the Jayhawks win it going away, 60-46. to 46. For Rick Savosic and our entire Big 12 crew, I'm Dave Armstrong. Join us Saturday. 1230 for Studio 66 with Doug Bell and Brendan Manzer. For more information on the Big 12 Network, log on to ESPNplus.com. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports.